Hello everyone, Steve here. I'd like to share some of the optimizations that I've been making on clock gears for 3D printing. I'll show how I start with the gear profile from a tool called Gearotic and then optimize that for printing and specifically the changes that I make to make these gears print better. And then I'll go through additional optimizations that I make to account for the Arachne slicing engine. So the starting point is Gearotic, and I typically go with about a 45% tooth width, and that gives a reasonable amount of backlash and makes the gears less likely to bind. If you were going to cut gears out of brass or use them out, make gears out of steel for the transmission in your car, you'd probably be okay with the 50% tooth width 50% pinion width, but for a clock, the backlash is pretty harmless. And if you know, adding about 5% extra backlash makes these gears a lot less likely to bind up. I start with a, a gear profile from Gearotic, and then I, I pull that into CAD. And if I go straight from the, the CAD into Prusa Slicer, this is what that gear looks like in Prusa Slicer with no modifications whatsoever. And one thing you notice is the perimeter of the gear teeth is nice and clean, but the inside of each tooth has lots of tiny printed pieces. The printer will print a small section, lift the print head, and then drop down and print another section, lift the print head, drop down and print another one. All that retraction and lifting is just increasing the likelihood of stringing and that stringing can stick to the print head and show up as a blob on these gears. So I found that a gear straight out of Gearotic ended up with lots of stringing and it was kind of a messy gear. I didn't really care for it. The first thing I do when I import the gears from Gearotic into a CAD program is I clean up the profile. These curved surfaces are actually a sequence of very small, short lines. One of the first things I do to start cleaning up the gears is to draw a few layout markers. This is the primary pitch circle that the gear is defined around, and this other circle defines the addendum. And then I add another circle which for the dedendum, so I want to, I want to redraw these teeth. I want the tooth depth to be all the way to this inner line, and then I draw another circle, which will be the width of the rim. I just start by drawing a few straight lines and arcs to simplify this profile. I draw a couple of arcs to approximate this surface of the gear, and I'm only going to draw on one side of the gear. The concept of how this gear is going to be optimized was initially defined on a website called Gary's Wooden Clocks. It seems to be a now dead website, but it basically described a concept of a gear specifically for clocks that said clock gears are only going to spin in one direction, so only one surface of that gear tooth actually matters, and the backside of the gear tooth, which would be this surface, can be any shape as long as it doesn't interfere with the operation of the gear. And also that backlash in a clock gear really doesn't matter because the, the weight that's driving the clock is always applying pressure so that this one side of the gear is touching the gear next to it. I will define the clock gears around those concepts, but optimized specifically for 3D printing. Let me turn off the a couple of things that aren't needed for this view. I'm going to turn off the original gear. So I've defined one surface of one gear tooth. And then I create an offset, which is the width that will be printed perfectly using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The second step is to clean up this profile. So now I have a single tooth drawn, 
and it looks like an unusual shape, but if you go back to the original gear, what you can see is the one surface that matters follows the profile straight out of gyrotic. The back surface of this tooth is inside the shape of the original gear. So if the original gear from gyrotic doesn't bind up, this new gear tooth will also not bind up. So now I have this 20 tooth gear that should print cleanly. The next thing I need to do is draw some spokes. This is what the gear looks like in Prusa Slicer. This is the classic slicer, which was the only thing that was available two or three years ago when I started doing these optimizations. And one thing you notice is there are no retractions when this gear is being printed. This gear is going to print very cleanly. A problem occurred a little while after I started doing these optimizations, which is actually a huge improvement with the Arachne slicing engine. But what you notice is if you zoom into the teeth of this gear, Arachne puts these rounded corners on the inside of every, every bend, which leaves this little triangle. And then those triangles need to be filled in. So then I went looking for how can we get rid of these extra dots of printing? The first optimization is to take advantage of the knowledge that all of these inner corners are going to have rounded surface. Let's just extend a rounded surface all the way to the spoke and put this little cutout opposite anywhere you have two inside corners. So this will print cleanly. Now when I add those little divots at the, the root of every gear tooth, this will print a lot cleaner. That's going to get rid of about 80% of the of the extra retractions when this gear prints. Here's what that gear looks like in the slicer. Let me make sure I, I still have the Arachne slicing engine turned on. I got rid of those extra retractions in these four positions, but I've still got this one left over. And the problem on this one is that there are four inner corners that are meeting, so there's no way to add a divot to clean that up other than to move the spoke. So if I go back into the CAD and I modify these gears to, to rotate the spokes, I've already drawn these, and by moving the spoke, I can have this cut out to handle these corners and then this cut out to handle these corners. It, it looks a little bit unusual because of all these curved surfaces that you expect to be a, a circle, but because it's on the inside of the gear, it doesn't affect the performance of the gear. So now if I go back to the slicer, this is what that gear looks like with, with this modification. And you can see that even the extra infill right here has, has been eliminated. So this is what the gear looks like with the Arachne slicing engine. It prints in 13 minutes. And we can still see that there's a tiny bit of infill right there. We could get rid of that if we wanted to by adding little divots here. I probably won't do these on a gear because this is a, a wear surface that needs to be accurately centered around an axle. So I'm probably going to avoid that. But if I wanted to add that to a gear, I could end up with a gear. I could end up with a gear looking like this and all of the extra retractions have been eliminated. So these are some of the optimizations that I've been making for 3D printed clock gears. 
And this is a very specific use case because I know that a clock is only going to run in one direction. If I, if I go back to CAD and show what the new tooth shape looks like compared to the original tooth shape out of Gearotic, you can see that the new profile fits inside the profile of the original gear. It just adds extra backlash, which which is good for the functionality of the gear. And there's extra depth inside the teeth, less likelihood that the tooth of a pinion is going to bottom out on this gear. I find that the gears print so cleanly that that helps the clocks run better. So that's a, a summary of the, the changes that I've been making to gears to be used in 3D printed clocks. So I'll put links to some of the clocks that I have on my mini factory in the description below. And this is how I'm able to get eight day run times and longer in pretty much all of my weight driven clocks. So thanks for watching. Add comments down below if you can think of other optimizations that could be made or what you think of these optimizations for clock gears. Thanks a lot. Bye. One reason I like the 0.093 inch or 2.36 millimeter feature size is it allows three perimeters for a total of six passes of the print head to print each feature. And a lot of the newer printers are now being designed with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, which then becomes four passes. Uh, so you can see this gear should be able to work equally well with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and no extra retractions or infill or it will print with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle with six passes.